Here's a very interesting question from the most recent test. You need to determine the number of squares in the presented shape. You have four different choices. Choice A, 22. Choice B, 20. Choice C, 18. Choice D, 14. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. If you're trying to recreate conditions from the real test, you can give yourself between 15 and 20 seconds. This is about as much time as you get. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you final solution. Believe it or not, I counted 18 squares in this shape. Let me share them all to you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. I hope I found all of them. Do you see any additional ones? Please make sure to share them in comments. And if you're looking for additional practice questions, make sure to check out the description of this video for the link to the ebook. And now, here's the question for you to practice. You're presented with triangle, which is broken down into three equal horizontal parts. On the left side of the triangle, you see numbers 8, 4, and 3 if you go from the bottom to the top. And on the right side of the triangles, you see numbers 2, 6, and 1 number is missing. You need to select missing number from four different choices. Choice A, 6. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 7. And choice D, 2. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. If you figured out the solution, please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's a cool question you frequently see on the test. You need to calculate the question mark. And you're presented with the three-layer pyramid. On the bottom layer, you have numbers 8 and 2. On the middle layer, you have numbers 4 and 6. And in the top layer, you have numbers 3. And on the other side of the pyramid, you have a question mark. And this question mark can be one of those four values. Your choice A is 6. Choice B is 10. Choice C is 7 and choice D is 2. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. For some of you, this type of question might be easy, but for some of you, it might require some thinking. So feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out, the key to solve these types of challenges is always look for patterns. And if you look closely, each row adds up to 10. And vertically, values also add up to 15. So the correct answer here is choice C, 7. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video to share with others. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. Here's the interesting question where you need to select the word which is opposite of the word common. You have four different choices. Choice A, trivial. Choice B, routine. Choice C, general. And choice D, exceptional. Do you see the solution? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Keep in mind that during the real test, you can't use internet or your smartphone. Ready or not? I am going to move forward and reveal the answer. You can come up with the correct answer by thinking logically. For example, the opposite of the word common is the word uncommon, which means that among the given choices, exceptional is the word which is closest to meaning of uncommon and which is also the opposite of common. Let's look at the definition. The definition of exceptional is unusual and not typical which is not common. So the correct choice here is choice D, exceptional. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I have a question for you. Have you considered subscribing to online training for everyone? We focus on helping you not just to get ready for assessment test, but using our materials, you can also improve your concentration, IQ and brain power. 
and we're having a lot of fun along the way in this process. Thank you for considering, and now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's an interesting question from the recent test. You need to figure out the word from the five letters you see on the screen. The letters are H, A, B, E, and C. Do you see the word? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. You can pause this video to see if you can figure it out on your own. Make sure to use all the letters and make sure to use each of the letters once. Ready or not, I'm going to move forward and share with you my solution. But keep in mind that a lot of times multiple words can be formed. So if you see another word, please make sure to share it in comments. The solution I found is the word beach. Let me spell it for you. B E A C H. Do you see any other solutions? Make sure to post them in comments. And if you'd like to improve your ability to guess the words, you can play word games, read a lot, and practice crosswords and puzzles. Here's the frequently used question on the test, which may not be as simple as it looks. Current time on the clock is 10.05 p.m. What is the degree angle between the hour hand and the minute hand on the clock? You have four different choices. Choice A, 75 degrees. Choice B, 80 degrees. Choice C, 90 degrees. And choice D, 100 degrees. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time Maybe research the clock, look carefully, and see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. Because clock's surface is a circle, clock's hand covers 300 degrees in 12 hours. There are 12 five-minute sections on the clock, and every five minutes, the hand covers 30 degrees, which is calculated as 360 degrees divided by 12, which is equal 30 degrees. At 10.05 p.m., there will be three five-minute sections between hands on the clock. So the angle between the minute hand and the hour hand on the clock will be 3 multiplied by 30, which would be equal 90 degrees. Hopefully you've nailed this question and saw the answer right away. And if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new questions every day in the community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let's look at the interesting question where you need to form the word. And you need to use all the letters and only use each letter once. You're presented with nine letters. Those nine letters are S, Y, R, C, I, E, O, V, D. And you need to form the word using all the letters. Do you see the solution? Give yourself a little bit of time maybe 10 to 20 seconds. This is typically as much time as you get in a real test. Ready or not, I am going to reveal you my version of the solution. But my version may not be the only one. So if you see other possible options, please make sure to share them in comments. The word you can form is discovery. Let me spell it for you. D I S C O V E R Y. And the definition of discovery is the act of finding out or learning about something for the first time. Here is the sample sentence where word discovery is used. Scientists consider detection of gravitational waves the greatest discovery of the 21st century. Did you discover any other words? Make sure to post them in comments. And if you're getting ready for the test and looking for additional questions to practice, make sure to check the description of this video for links to additional resources. A lot of people ask how can I help on this channel? One of the best ways to help is to help other people answer the questions that they are getting. If you know the answer to the question you see in comments, please post the answer in the comment section of this video. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. 
Here is the question from the real test, where you present it with the sequence of number, and you need to identify the missing number. The numbers you see are 1, 5, 17, 65, and then comes the missing number. And you have four different choices for the missing number. Choice A, 237. Choice B, 257. Choice C, 277. And then choice D, 297. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, let's move forward and look at the final answer. To solve these types of problems, my advice to you, always look for patterns. And the pattern here is that the next number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of n minus 1 in parentheses. And here is the number sequence. So let's look at the calculation of numbers in this particular series. The first number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 0, which is 1. Second number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 2 minus 1, which is an equivalent of 1 plus 4 and equals 5. Third number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 3 minus 1, which is 1 plus 4 in the power of 2, which is 16, which equals 17. Fourth number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 4 minus 1, which equals 1 plus 64 and equals 65. And the missing number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 5 minus 1, which equals 1 plus 256, which equals 257. So the correct choice here is choice B, 257. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to solve similar problems on the test. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's the test question where you presented with four different words and you need to identify the word which is misspelled. The first word you see on the screen is procrastination. The second is accommodation. Third one is corruption. And the fourth one is adjudication. Please take a close look to see if you can see the word which is misspelled. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe a little bit longer, to see if you can come up with the correct solution. Radio Net, I am going to move forward and reveal the correct solution to you. If you look closely, you see that the word corruption is misspelled. The correct spelling is C-O-R-R-U-P-T-I-O-N. So the correct choice here is choice C, word corruption. If you're interested to improve your knowledge of word spelling, you can play word games, read a lot, and then practice crosswords and puzzles. One of the most frequent questions I get is to provide the best techniques to get prepared and pass the test. We put together a list of resources that might be helpful for you in the description section of this video. Obviously, taking sample tests and reviewing questions and answers is a must. But some less known ways to improve might be to take dietary supplements, sign up for free trials with educational training vendors, and even use special supplements to improve your brain function and concentration. I put links to our trusted partners for the products I use in the description section of this video. Some links might be affiliate, which means that I will get paid a small fee without increasing costs to you. Make sure to check them out. And one request for you. If you know any other helpful resource to help you get ready and pass the test, feel free to share it in comments so we could all learn and get better prepared. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. This particular question was just recently introduced in the test, and I would need your help to determine if I answered it correctly. You are presented with the very unusual shape, and you need to detect all the triangles that are part of this shape. You have four possible choices. Choice A, 11. 
choice B 13, choice C 15, and choice D 17. Do you see the answer? Consider giving yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 20 seconds, to see if you can count all the triangles. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and show you how many triangles did I discover. Tricky question, don't you think so? But I was very surprised when I counted 15 triangles in this shape. Let me go over and show all of them to you. Here's the first one. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. Seventh. Eighth. Ninth. Ten. 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Do you see any additional ones? Please make sure to post them in the comment section of this video. And if you're getting ready for the assessment test, please make sure to check out the description for the link to the ebook that will help you to get ready. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you like this content, can you please give this video big thumbs up? This tells us that you need more content like this and we will make sure you will get it in the future. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is an interesting question which may not be as easy as it looks. Defective clock gains 5 minutes every hour. What will be the cumulative degree angle clock's second hand travel in one hour? You are presented with 4 different choices. Choice A, 360 degrees. Choice B, 360.5 degrees. Choice C, 390 degrees. And choice D, 380 degrees. Typically on the test, you get between 10 to 15 seconds to solve these types of challenges. Make sure to give yourself a little bit of time if you are trying to recreate the real test conditions. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and share with you the solution to this challenge. To solve this challenge, we need to emphasize the fact that defective clock gains 5 minutes every hour, which means that in one hour, defective clock's minute hand travels 65 minutes, which is calculated as 60 minutes for one hour plus 5 extra minutes. Typical clock moves a minute hand every one minute and it moves it to 6 degree angle, which is calculated as 360 degrees divided by 60 minutes, which equals 6 degrees, which means that the 65 minute angle would be represented by 65 multiplied by 6, which would be equal to 390 degree angle. Obviously, as with a lot of problems, there is an alternative way to solve it. Since one hour movement of the minute hand is represented by 360 degrees, we can look at 12 numbers on the clock, and each number on the clock is an increment of 5 minutes. 5 minutes is represented by 30 degree angle, which is calculated as 360 degrees divided by 12 number, which equals 30 degrees. So 65 minutes would be represented by 360 degrees for the full circle plus 30 degrees for extra 5 minutes, which would be 390 degree angle. Did you find other alternative solutions? Please make sure to share them in comments. Here is the cool question that you frequently get on the test. You are presented with 4 different letters, and you need to guess the word using all letters presented. The letters we have are W, O, B and L. Can you guess the word? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, let's go ahead and reveal the solution. The correct answer here is ball, which is spelled as B O W N L. Hopefully, you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the practice problem for you. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? You have four different choices. Choice A, Sunday. Choice B, Monday. Choice C, Friday. 
chose D Saturday. Feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. I would like to give you a hint. The best way to solve these types of problems is using reverse calculations. So do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure out the answer? Make sure to post your answer as well as your rationale for solving this problem in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is a very interesting question we frequently see on the test. A 5 by 5 by 5 cube has its side's length increased by 40%. As a result of these changes, by what percentage has cube's total volume increased? You are presented with four different choices. Choice A – 274%, Choice B – 325%, Choice C – 357%, and Choice D – 379%. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time because the answer to this question may not be obvious. Hopefully you've nailed it, but let's move forward and I'll explain you how I solved this problem so we can get to the correct solution together. First thing we're going to do is calculate original cube volume. 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5 is equals 125. Now let's increase the side of the cube by 40%. 5 multiplied by 1.4 equals 7, which means that the new cube's volume would be calculated as 7 multiplied by 7 multiplied by 7, and the end result will be 343. The volume change in percentages then can be calculated as new volume 343 divided by old volume 125 and multiplied by 100%. The end result of this calculation is 274.4%. So the correct choice here is choice A, 274%. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now I have a practice question for you. You need to determine which item comes next in the sequence. You are presented with three large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside, and small squares are of a different color. And the fourth square is missing, and you have four different choices to choose from. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. And make sure to post your solution and your rationale in the description section of this video. This way I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's an interesting question we frequently see on the test. Kiara walks at the constant speed of 5 miles per hour. Olivia starts walking at the same time as Kiara but starts 4 miles behind her and walks at a constant speed of 8 miles per hour. How long will it take for Kiara to catch up with Olivia? You're presented with 4 different choices. Choice A – 50 minutes choice B 60 minutes, choice C 70 minutes, and choice D 80 minutes. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time and think about all possible combinations. Ready or not, let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. One important consideration to help you solve this challenge is that the speed for both Kiara and Olivia is presented in miles per hour, but answers are in minutes. So, at some point, we would need to make a conversion. Another important point is that both Kiara and Olivia will walk the same time and we can put it as X in hours before catching up, because they started at the same time. In our solution, X will be the time in hours when they will catch up and meet. To solve this challenge, we need to build an equation. 5X plus 4 equals 8X. 8X represents how much Olivia will walk and 5x plus 4 is representing how much Kiara can walk. And the starting point for this will be starting point of where Olivia starts, since Olivia starts 4 miles behind. So if we simplify this equation, 4 will be equal to 3x, and x will be equal 4 thirds or 1 and 1 third of an hour. And now is the time to do the conversion. 1 hour equals 60 minutes. 60 multiplied by 4 thirds equals 60 plus 20 
equals 80 minutes. So the correct answer here is choice D, 80 minutes. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And here is the practice question for you. You're presented with three full expressions and you need to calculate missing number in the fourth expression. Here are three full expressions. 18 by 3 equals 27. 12 by 4 equals 12. 22 by 8 equals 32. And you need to calculate the result of 12 multiplied by 9. You have four different choices. Choice A, 34. Choice B, 36. Choice C, 38. And choice D, 40. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time because the answer may not be obvious. I'm going to give you a quick hint. Do you know why it's always two-digit number multiplied by one-digit number? The correct answer here is choice B, 36. If you figured it out, please make sure to post your solution in comments. Here is an interesting problem from the real test. You are presented with three full expressions. 18 by 3 equals 27. 12 by 4 equals 12. 22 multiplied by 8 equals 32. And you need to calculate missing number in the expression 12 multiplied by 9. You have four different choices. Choice A, 34. Choice B, 36. Choice C, 38. And choice D, 40. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time as the answer may not be obvious. But in the end, I'm pretty sure you will figure it out. I'm gonna give you a quick hint. Take a look and see why there are two digit number multiplied by one digit number. How can you make it work in your advantage? Let's go ahead, reveal the answer and get to the correct solution together. Even though mathematically our sample expressions are not correct, for example 18 by 3 is not equal 27, if you multiply each digit separately and add results together, you will get to the result you need. For example, 18 by 3 should be processed as 1 multiplied by 3 in parentheses plus 8 multiplied by 3 in parentheses, which would be equal 3 plus 24 and which would be equal to 27. In the similar way, 12 multiplied by 4 can be calculated as a result of 1 multiplied by 4 in parentheses plus 2 multiplied by 4 in parentheses would be equal 4 plus 8 and would be equal to 12. And in very similar way, 22 multiplied by 8 would be a result of 2 multiplied by 8 in parentheses plus 2 multiplied by 8 in parentheses, which would be 16 plus 16, which would be equal to 32. So to calculate the answer of 13 multiplied by 9, we would need to multiply 1 by 9 in parentheses and add to 3 by 9 in parentheses, which would be sum of 9 and 27, and the end result would be equal to 36. So the correct answer here is choice B, 36. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections, or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.